Hello, Fruit Force, this is Captain Fruit reporting for duty, and today I want to talk about, you know, since the Crisis is getting that remaster, which is having mixed results, if you will. Another fascinating thing, by the way, about that Crisis remaster, if you didn't know, is it looks like the Nintendo Switch is getting the port first, which is really weird, because usually it's the last one to get a port. Well, anyway, you know, the, the, supposedly they're reworking we working at because people weren't happy with how it looks for the remaster and I can't blame them because I did a video if you didn't already watch it uh, it showed how it looked before and I can't see that much of a graphical update so I hope you sit back and enjoy the show Alright, for, for those of you that might not be aware, don't have as much of information about this, Crisis Warhead is a game that ran parallel to the original Crisis game. It actually had some updates and it refined the gameplay and things. I'll talk about that briefly in a little bit in this review too. But the story follows Sergeant Michael Skies, which is known as Psycho, which is, I think, a great name. And I'm going to be honest with you, I actually like this character more than the character that you played in as the original Crisis. And as you've seen in the original Crisis, he takes off and does stuff. Well, now you're going to fill in the gaps of that storyline of what he was doing as he faces his own trials and challenges on the other side of the island during this time period of that first game. If you look it up, it says it features new fully customized weapons, which is true. You have more weapons. You have a little bit of different vehicle variety and a little bit in the enemies, along with new multiplayer content. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I did not play the multiplayer content here. I was only doing the story. First of all, graphically, it holds up just as well. Uh, playability, I didn't run into anything, once again, too problematic with the gameplay of this game. I did get a little bit of texture popping at one point, but I think that was because my computer was doing an update. And I don't know about you, Creators do updates during gameplay and stuff. It sometimes sucks. It messes stuff up, which is just, oh, it aggravates me. So, you, you know, no major differences there. So on a technological standpoint, there we're okay. So, but the plot, let's talk about the plot. We're going to talk about the gameplay and everything else. In 2020, the ancient alien spacecraft is uncovered in North Korea, occupied Lighten Islands, east of the Philippines. British SAS soldiers... Sergeant Michael Psycho, the character that you're playing in here, the protagonist, is a member of the Raptor team, a squad of mostly U.S. soldiers, outfitted with this, this advanced nanotechnology. He splits up with his team during his fight, and you take on his story. Yeah, that's all I'm going to go through into the story, but there it is. So let's talk about it. So gameplay. Well, I already talked about graphics, by the way, a little bit. As I said, it holds up the same, same about system requirements here. Gameplay. Wow, you know... I really like the different controller setup in this. That's one of the things I talked about in the, the original Crisis and the review I did for that, is they didn't give you a lot of manipulation of the controls, and it wasn't really your modern control scheme for our shooters. It was close to it, but off just a little bit. Whereas this one updates it a little bit, it has a more modern control scheme, which I had a lot easier time getting the handle of, because the other one I just kept hitting the wrong button once in a while, because I'm so used to the traditional control schemes for first person shooters, and this was just easier for me to adapt to. So I did enjoy that. The controls were tight. I didn't have any issues with that. Also, just like in the original Crisis game, you have uh, one of the situations where as long as you're not taking hits, your character will heal. His shield will do, get so much damage and it starts taking down your health. You get your shield back up in the health. You just got to make sure you're not getting shot. No, uh, the, the old school health packs, which, you know, makes it a little bit easier. This style, you know, at this time... It, frame of games they moved on to this regenerating health thing which i'm fine with uh but once again if you're going for the old school game where you have to get health packs you're not going to get it here once again graphics were good the sound was just as good before now here's the the biggest thing i've noticed in a difference of this game is on the first crisis once you start hitting the alien segment i found the game to slow down it was and i don't mean Technically, uh, technically, with the graphics and things like that, I meant story-wise and gameplay and fun. I mean, yes, there were spots where you're running a little bit, things like that, but it just it didn't have as much fun to me as when I was shooting the soldiers and everything else, uh, you know, as I did previously in the game. So I, and I did, you know, no offense to the development team and everything else too. I didn't even really care for the design of the aliens a whole lot. I, they were okay, nothing that I'm going to say was bad, but nothing I'm going to say was so great. It's like, oh, I can't, you know, these, these 
these type of enemies really step up the game, it just didn't do it for me. Well, when Crisis Warhead was announced on June 5th, 2008, it was announced as a standalone expansion pack for Crisis. And it retailed less than normal games, which is good because that's one of the things, it's not a full game as compared to Crisis. I'd say it's around half the length of Crisis, maybe even a little less so. Uh, so, for example, I took my sweet old time playing Crisis, and one of the good things about Crisis is it's sort of like Far Cry. If you're not familiar with Far Cry, you have your choices of how you tackle certain tasks. You can go in guns blazing, or you can go in stealth-wise. Usually stealth-wise is the much safer way to go. Um, well, you have the same kind of thing with Crisis. And so this allowed you to have that, but so I spent a lot of time, because you know, I tended to go to stealth, and I wanted to see the visuals and things like that, so you could probably finish Crisis in 10 to 12 hours. I took 14 dilly-dallying, where I'd say you could probably finish Crisis Warhead in 4 to 5 hours, where I was dilly-dallying and took 7. <laughs> but I did a lot of dilly-dallying and a lot of looking around, because I, I liked a lot of the looks and things like that. So as you see here, it's graphically, even though, uh, once again, this video, just like my last one, it doesn't do the game justice. Graphically, it looked great. Uh, so anyway, as I said, the, the game time is good for the, sto for the story. The story was interesting. Uh, as I said, it's not a full game, so it's a bit shorter, so don't buy it and expect it to be full. But right now, you can get it on Steam bundled with Crisis if you want to check it out that way. Uh, I didn't have to have any computer technological issues to getting this game started. When I did Crisis, I had to do some had some challenges to get the game to run properly, as I mean, as, as to install. It didn't want to it uh, didn't want to start up right afterwards. It didn't want to run the application, so I had to do some things. I didn't have any of that issue with Crisis Warhead, so that was great. Uh, I said the controls were good. I enjoyed that. The graphics still were good. The story was good. Once again, not a full length as long as the original. So. Here's the difference, though. As I said, whereas Crisis, I thought, slowed down a lot when I got to the alien part. Crisis Warhead was a balls-out ride all the way through, and I really liked it. it had, I think it had a faster pace and had more explosions. You fought a lot more heavy equipment with it. It just seemed to me it was a lot more balls to the wall all the time through. And I really enjoyed that. It kept me more entertained. Where I found that Crisis, when I was getting towards the end, still a good game, don't get me wrong, when I was getting towards the end, I was ready for it to end. It's like, okay, this enough is enough. Whereas Crisis Warhead, I was blowing stuff up all the way through, and I never really felt that. Yes, you do fight aliens, especially towards the end, you get a nice, big, big gun, and you take down a big alien. And that's another part there. I like the final boss fight in this much, much, much more than I did the original Crisis. Now, this game, for reception, was largely positive re reviews for it as well. It was praised for its improvements over the original Crisis in areas like AI and gameplay pacing, and I agree with those things absolutely. The AI did seem like a step above, and I already mentioned the pacing. Yeah. It cited the original game's criticism that, that battles were few and far between, because there was. There was more sniper and kind of things like that, where this one you didn't have as much, but you still had the ability to do that. So, I, once again, I'm not judging the multiplayer at all because I didn't play it on this, okay? Once again, uh, you're not going to get as long a story, but I think if you're going to get it, get it in the bundle. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. If you like FPSs and this is one that you never played, now might be a good time to do it because, you know, it's going to get a lot of hype maybe unless you want to wait for the HD and see if this, this gets an HD remake. But right now the price is right and super cheap right now on things like Steam. So that's the way I would recommend getting it. And once again, I think you're going to enjoy this protagonist more, believe it or not, than the Nomad. But that's just me. I enjoyed it, and I hope you will too. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep it frugal. I think the train is slowing down. What are they up to? It's an automated system. It's stopping at the next station. See if you can hold the train there. I'm arranging a heavy VTOL for extraction, but it's going to take some time. I want to make sure I take a moment to thank the people that help make this video possible. I consider you producers of this channel and of this show. Without your support, these videos would not be possible. So I'd like to thank Rat, Dimes. I also want to thank the people that like to remain anonymous and anybody else that has contributed to this channel in the past. Without your support, these videos would not be possible. If you find yourself in a position you can help and you want to see your name here too as a producer credit, go ahead and look down in the links below. There will be a Patreon, a subscribe star, as well as a one-time donation, and you can see your name up here too.
thank you.